Hi. Hello YouTube. How you doing? I'm just involving you in my thought process here. You know, I could make videos in two minutes and just blurt out the facts, but it's not going to get through. So if you're only listening for two minutes, you might as well not bother, I reckon. Apart from picking up a couple of facts, what's the point? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> that wasn't even my thought process. Um, the first bit about I'm going to talk about is um, the cosmos becoming conscious. That was a comment Lisa Tully made, and again, she's amazing wisdom. Wonder if it's otherworldly. Anyway, um, and then I was just, you know, sort of, you know, explain like, well, animals. I believe they have souls, of course, but they are living mainly by instinct, and we don't know for sure. But you know, do they philosophize about death and? If they're going to die, do they philosophize about, well, will they cease to exist, or will, you know, will there be more, blah, 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 blah. And that humans, you know, have for a long time been aware of their own demise, and that we're all going to die, and have philosophized about it. So, that is the cosmos becoming conscious. Becoming conscious, because mostly thinking about death probably involves worrying about it and that's not exactly that's probably more instinct shall we say than cosmos becoming conscious so then of course we go on to the point well for ha half of our lives or a third of our lives we're in bed asleep and in my opinion we're on a different dimension we're not just in a dream state as the psychologists or whatever would put it and therefore sort of belittle it to functions of the human body just going through the processes as we sleep it's certainly more than that and usually in our dreams we have about as much control as we do in life we're in a situation okay in this life in this physical dimension there's a timeline so you go to bed at night and in the morning you wake up further along that timeline and you continue whereas in dreams those that we can remember from time to time um, seems to be completely haphazard and random as to where we might be uh, so Back to my point about in most dreams we have about as much control as we do in this life. Some lighter dreams as you get into sleep you certainly have a bit more control because that's still, well it's your imagination, it's like the first level of dimension of another dimension is your imagination. Because you're not always fully in control of that. Uh, and you know things happen in your imagination that like sometimes you don't you know if you're frustrated and try and imagine something it usually always goes wrong you know there's not you can't get a sort of a, a stable image if you like um, but yeah so say you're sitting on a train in your dream you know what are you actually doing there or well, you're sitting on the train as if in life you find yourself sitting on a train what do you do? You sit there and look out the window. What do you do in your dream? You sit in the train and you look out the window. It's a different view though. Well it is for me. I certainly have this sort of um, dream city where I uh, seem to go there recurringly, not all the time. Most of the time I don't remember my dreams. I think as a cannabis smoker um, you don't remember as much of your dreams and my belief is that sleeping more deeply I do know that um, 
it's constant all throughout the night and I have said that in the video before and I don't like repeating myself so I won't go on about that just is accept it <laughs> that's my instant karma instant karma is coming but it didn't fall off the table so it's worth just ooh. hello see my laptop Right, beautiful, instant calm, I love it, I love it, bring it on. I can't pause it, so I'm just going to have to shout as I head over towards the kettle, and everyone's having to be super patient with these videos, you know, that's just it, just it isn't it, what do you want, do you want, do you want a world of truth? Then you need to see every second, don't you? You can't have... If I cut and edit bits out, your brain is only going to kind of surmise that, you know, Ooh, did something go on there? You know, what was that that happened? So what we're talking about, the cosmos becoming conscious. Well, at least Tully may have had some complete different... Um, intention about this but I think what she meant is you know here we are in the universe uh, stardust uh, four billion years ago you know you were lucky to find a bit of bacteria or single cell or something and um, but here on earth as it is may have happened in lots of places um, in the universe before we might be the first I don't think we're the first. I think there's been lots of places before. But here we are on this planet. And we've gone from bacteria to this to that to that. Harboring life and souls which I'm sure are occupied by souls and they're living that life. And it's, you know, it's a good natural life. you with companionship and a lot of love. So animals living as an animal has been good and we've probably been doing that for millions and millions of years and then we've been humans and we're slowly becoming conscious you know there have been enlightened times there have been enlightened ones and w we are coming up to the the grand awakening I do believe that's again something uh, Lisa Tully talks about Whereas we become to understand as human beings that we're more than just human beings, that we have infinite souls and that the universe is a playground for us. I mean, maybe I'm not fully there yet myself. Um, I've had moments, times where you know I know this and I can almost take the universe or physical universe as I know it, almost take it out of existence for myself but it is here and we should use it and we should use it wisely and we should design a system where we have maximum amount of love and companionship not not the minimal amount um, and the thing is you know you can't know really well sort of 10,000 people you can't have good proper friendships with 10,000 people. So when we start to understand what it is we really need out of life, as more and more people begin to understand that, and they are, as society crumbles around them, um, the more we can start sort of getting on with the real things in life, the real important things. 
in being with ones you love. You know, spending time with them nicely, not bickering about crap and, you know, war games. Trying to get one over the other and all that sort of nonsense. But does society has been designed to piss us off <laughs> and get rid of us. Um, so we just got to hang in there a bit longer, uh, get with um, get with the program, people, and evolve, evolve your minds. But some knowledge can help in that direction. And there's a few other things I'm going to talk about. So, I kind of hinted that in my last video that I felt like I was on the verge of um, something big happening. And um, I had a couple of things. I don't know. If, well, I'm not going to talk about that. Something in my personal life. I had someone staying here, sort of a stepson. And um, I was really hoping, you know, I could sort him out and everything. But um, he's six foot three. I can't really get him over my knee and give him a good smack. <laughs> and I don't think it would have worked anyway, because you know he'd have, he'd have no, he'd only have a negative effect. So I kind of let him do things his own way and see how they turned out. And they kind of went downhill, and then I had to sort of kick him out. But, um, so that was, you know, that was a lot of tenseness and anything. But then, um, you know, I'd sort of been thinking about the cosmos becoming conscious. So that really stuck with me. I really was pondering on that. And I still will. I still will be pondering on that. And, and aiming to get there as well. I've been good and bad re uh, recently. I've had, like days of being very good and then days of being not very good um, I'm on a good day today it's with the eating you know the amount of crap piling into your mouth I kind of decided now I'm I'm gonna be pretty much fasting when I feel like it and only really eating when I'm, when I'm really hungry you know, and if I've done some um, physical activity, you know, to to sort of warrant getting some protein back into me and minerals and shit. Um, and then, you know, if I'm going to snack, try just to snack fruit. Because um, on the bad days, what's happened is I've opened a packet of biscuits. And then it's like, you know, get a couple of biscuits. A um, couple more biscuits. So, you know, it's probably uh, more harmful, sugar, probably more harmful than tobacco. And that's saying something. If you can quit smoking, but you, the, what makes us diabetic, sugar, and, you know, refined sugars and everything that you would have in biscuits. And, uh, the, you know, the reversal effect is, is like um, three times as hard. There's like three levels it gets to. You have to sort of, and to reverse it, you really have to work hard. So, yeah, sugar. Pretty bad. All right, hang on. Um, so there is some good news coming, so just hold on, hold on. Because I heard two sort of quite amazing things damn it put milk in the tea um meant to do lemon um a bit of sugar only a tiny bit much less than i used to use believe me see as long as you can improve on what you've done before then you can be you know pleased with yourself that you're doing better than you did before and if you don't go to, you know, just go at a pace that you can handle. 
And then, um, and then it's not too hard, and you can stick to it, and you keep on making improvements. Slowly, slowly, you get used to it. Walking past those cake areas in Morrison's now, straight past them, I look. But, um, yeah, I went to the farm shop today, didn't even buy any of the cookies that they usually do. See? It's when they're in your cupboard, you can't do anything about it. As soon as it's open, boom. <laughs> So yeah, we're in spring, but it's got colder. Ice on the little pond I made this morning. I didn't make the pond this morning. There was ice on it this morning. But I did make it quite recently. I've got tadpoles in there. Well, they're just still in their jelly frog spawn. And um, see, I haven't even had a drag, and it's already affected me. Yeah, I filled it with rainwater and I also went and got from two old ponds in villages because apparently they're ancient, say ancient, couldn't they? But they were a bit flooded, so I don't know how much of the ancient stuff I would have got in the jar. But anyway, it's got two jars of ponds. And um, yeah, the bit of the muck that I got with the frog spawn, I mean, that was polluted. And they've definitely got clean water where they are here. Okay, they haven't got their mums and dads, but there's a blue plastic frog. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be all right. Yeah, I really want to make my tiny little front garden like a little nature reserve, but also a place to grow some of my herbs. Uh, dandelion and thistles do very well here. See, if you grow things that already grow here, you know, this, this, the soil obviously suits them, the weather suits them, you know, so you can, they'll grow well. And if we were in a world of playing swapsies, you know, I'd say, well, here's some of my um, milk thistle seeds, okay, highly valuable, medicinal, excellent for the liver. Give us some of your um, aloe vera <laughs> from Mexico. And here's some of my dandelion roots, dandelion leaves. and Give me some of your <laughs> echinacea. And then I'd be sorted for herbs. But anyway, the good news well I heard about two things at the same time kind of from the same two people and one I've actually met um, D. Murphy 25 I met him at a healing festival last year cool guy he was on about building things with triangles at that stage but he's been doing other things as people do allowed to have more than one uh, thing we're into aren't we it's healthy I love variety I like to have about three things so um the first thing I heard about or is well I've heard about urine drinking before and I've just immediately dismissed it you know just thinking well that's waste from the body what do you want to drink that for that's a bit stupid you just have to go through <laughs> processing all the same waste again um, but that was until I sort of got to know a little bit more about kidneys and urine and understood that urine is mostly from what it 
filters out the blood. And the kidneys filters out the blood. But there's also sort of excess requirement things. We can't hold on to certain vitamins and hormones. Apparently in the morning your wee is full of melatonin. Which if you drink back into your body. I could see that, that, that being a benefit. Definitely. So there's some excess vitamins and melatonin with your morning drink um, and it's warm <laughs> so I tried it okay I I wanted to wait and improve my diet but every time I was having a wee I was thinking I'm missing this I'm missing this this could be really good for me you know when you hear something could be good for you you want to try it don't you because you want that benefit and um, so I think about two days went past and I thought and I heard that the morning one was the important one and I'd heard from another YouTuber who was drinking his urine I can't remember his YouTube channel Yuri Yuri something so it begins with a Y and his name is uh, Gravity Master Yogi Tarzan he's a cool dude and he said someone, you know, missed the first bit of your wee because that's got the heaviest bits in. So I guess that's got, you know, things that you'd probably want out of your blood. And then take the mid-flow. Anyway, you know, I did that and it was still filled up my cup. <laughs> um, so I drank it. Tasted like piss, as you'd expect. But it didn't make me gag or anything. It was none of that gagging. I even swilled it. Drank it down. Had another couple of sips. Thinking probably, you know, that will do for now. And I was standing outside in my pants. Did I go upstairs at that point? Yeah. I went in the house upstairs and I, over the sink, I sort of dipped my hand in and wiped a bit on my arm as they're saying you could do and wiped it on the other arm he said the smell would go away wiped it on my legs <laughs> I'm typing away on my chest and on my face and I really tried to get some in my eyes you know because this guy was putting it in his eyes and saying he made his eyes really white so I did like it didn't sting or anything it was nice that was a nice so, and then I thought, oh, maybe it's good for baldness. And I'll put a load in my hair. <laughs> Stupid thing is, I had a customer to go and see. <laughs> about an hour later. Like, it, it dried off my arms and things pretty quick. And I could smell them. I and it was like, a, yeah, it, it, you could still smell. You know, I knew it was urine because obviously I knew. So... It did still smell a bit, a bit, not much. And I wasn't sure about my hair. Anyway, I got to this customer. Of course, I'm sitting in the chair looking at the computer. He's standing behind me. <laughs> I knew he could smell something. Anyway, he very polite, he didn't say anything. It was only later in an email that I dared say, sorry if I smelled a bit. I <laughs> tried this cure and cure for baldness <laughs> just didn't want to explain everything so anyway it's all all right they don't care as long as you just do everything they want them to do and um anyway so you know i did get a, quite a bit of a buzz off it that morning and when i went to see the next customer by then it had worn off and i think the only reason the, the smell lasted because in the hair it probably took longer to dry I don't, I don't think it worked. I don't think my hair's grown back. I mean, that's an ongoing project. It's not going to happen overnight, is it? I mean, if it took, you know, 12 years to happen, you can't expect it to go away in one day, of course. Over a period of years, my hair might start to reverse. We'll have to wait and see. All right, do you want to look at it? Actually, that'd be good for me too. Have a good look. The old bold spot. 
probably couldn't see it, probably all blurred. Um, so yeah, this drinking urine thing, interesting. I think what's interesting more about it is, uh, certainly if there was a lack of water, there is a source of water there that you probably shouldn't, you know, turn your nose up. So I think it's, so one is a survival thing, but maybe as a diagnosis thing as well, you know, um, there's certainly a taste to it. I couldn't say any food struck out to me. Maybe if I'd, I did actually one of the wheeze I had later on in the day, I had one sip of that and it tasted pretty much the same, complete different color, not nearly as yellow. Uh, so, you know, the verdict's still out on that. I will try it again. I wouldn't say I'm in any major rush to, particularly, but I will experiment with that again. It wasn't, you know, particularly bad. Anyway, the other thing I heard about, and this is, I think this is the best one. And I'll just remind people that when an answer comes from God, it is always very, always seems to be very simple, kind of, and something that's always just been there and you never actually thought about it. But um, there's a thing called breatharianism, breatharian, breatharianism. And um, there's a school of thought out there that thinks that you can fully sustain yourself with breathing in. Now, what we usually do is we sit here going <laughs> in, out, in, out, in, out. So instead of that, you breathe in. the prana or something from the air so it's probably better to do in natural surroundings and not after having smoking and coated your lungs in tar naughty me right is my own worst enemy and elements from the air, oxygen, well, oxygen wouldn't, but thing emanates into your body. So you breathe in and you imagine this going to your body and also if you do it, it can make you feel quite lightheaded. You let that happen, you let that happen, don't get scared and quit. And it can do you a lot of good. So I've been experimenting with it. But there's lots of stories about say, an, an Indian woman from the age of 12. She never ate food or drank water. I'm not, I'm not so sure about taking it to that limit. I don't think we can. Maybe if you were living among nature all around you, constant walking in bare feet blah 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 maybe then it'd be possible but I think it says a lot for you know what we need and how much we need you know, how much food we really need so not just but not just for survival aspects but for the stress we cause the planet you know how much how much more we can we can give without having to take so much I think that's a good thing and it is like a big answer because you know I'm doing this because I want to feel better so I'm being selfish 
but it's actually better for the environment and then if everybody does it it's it's very very good and then um, we want to get rid of those chemtrails uh, and all those factories pumping out shit and the cars do love my car but you know uh, well we're nearly there with the cars because um, Formula One you know a big part of the power of the car now is produced when they're braking and okay we don't need Formula One cars so perhaps you know we can get a car which can be so much more efficient you know you're not having to worry about all the braking and starting up again because maybe 80% of the brake force could be turned back into energy yeah. Mm, wouldn't that be good? Mm. Anyway, so back to the breathing thing. Um, so it can make you feel good because uh, you just don't need to eat as much as you think you need to eat. How many times when you eat are you absolutely famished? Now, obviously, sometimes you get yourself into a trap of constantly eating. You know, this, you know, you get an appetite and then you just eat and eat and eat. And then, you know, you are just then an eating, shoveling machine. I mean, unless you're planning to hibernate for five months, you know, whack. <laughs> and also, I mean, this breathing thing can do so many things. I know it can. I, I'm only just... I'm only just tipping the iceberg at the moment. I'll, I'll make a proper video. The guy D Murphy 25, he's doing a proper experiment. He's trying to go without food and water. Just doing the breathing. He was big into the urine thing, and so is this other guy. But it seems I've watched quite a few of the videos, and it seems while they're into this urine thing, uh, they're not looking younger. <laughs> They kind of say, oh, we're looking younger. <laughs> but you look at them and you think, no, you're not. You know. So, yeah, so the, I think, you know, the urine thing, not such a big thing. But the breathing thing, I think, I think this could be amazing. I mean, you've got to try it to feel its effects. I noticed that, like, on the days when I'm being good and... And not needing to eat and I'm doing the breathing thing that I'm also not needing other things you know I'm less addicted to, to the smoking which is you know my main issue and um, and also just happier and more energy more energy I kept tap dancing <laughs> I was in the butchers and I was telling them about his group and then I just feel like tap dancing. I was picking up my bandmate drummer from his house and talking to his kids and I'm doing the breathing and I just feel like I start tap dancing. You know, it's not a bad thing, is it? It's not a bad thing from just taking and holding a breath. Can't talk while you're doing it, obviously. Unless you talk like this. And that would be really annoying. And plus, I am actually breathing out when I'm talking. Otherwise, I could have done that for quite a lot longer. <sighs> but yeah, try it. Definitely try it. Just, you know, get yourself nice straight back. Do one of these mudras or whatever they're called again. I've forgotten. Or whichever one you want, pray like this, like this, like this, like this. I don't do the horn. Alright. Um, yes, I think that's it. That is it for now. I'll let you go. See, it's only 34 minutes. 
tried to talk fast. All right, okay.